we always knew that cryptocurrency was a valuable asset for excess power. And that's why we partnered with the Robbie, which is a carbon neutral cryptocurrency, which is where I feel the market's going. Um, so now we have a company that is an ESS company and we're stepping into that crypto space in a big way because we have the power that the crypto miners don't have. Welcome to NAI 500 CEO interview series. Today we're interviewing Bryson Goodwin, CEO of Extreme Vehicle Battery Technologies Corp. Over the past week, we collected questions from our viewers about ACDC. And today, we're happy to have a chance to talk to Mr. Goodwin about these questions. As always, please like and subscribe. It really helps us to get more information out to the market. Hi, Bryson. Good to see you again. How are you doing? Oh, I'm great, thank you. And uh, thanks for having me. This is uh, a good opportunity to, uh, to have a discussion. Yeah, and thank you. This is the first time we've uh, fielded questions from the audience uh, for EV battery tech. So we're quite excited. We did get a lot of questions coming in over the last week. And actually this morning, we got a lot of questions this morning. So uh, we're happy to have you here so we can uh, ask you these questions. Of course, fire away. So as I alluded to, we got a lot of last minute questions related to this morning's press release uh, regarding the acquisition of the crypto mining infrastructure company. Can you elaborate more on your rationale for this acquisition? Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I can. I think, I think long-term shareholders understand that, that predominantly we started out as a blockchain company with a focus on a battery management system with an AI integration and, and a blockchain backbone. But what, what a lot of people probably didn't realize is uh, we are an energy company. Uh, specifically energy storage. So an, an energy storage company in, in a carbon neutral environment and um, production of, of crypto coins is, is a great use for excess energy on an ESS solution. And it's a spectacular use for excess energy for green technology through an ESS solution for for all of our all of our users and all of our consumers, it's 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 a beautiful application on a carbon neutral environment, which supplies a lot of passive income and a lot of potential upside for our shareholders. You know, one of the hardest parts of uh, of mining for crypto, from what we've seen, is access to good power and cheap power. Can you comment on that? Yes, uh, the number one roadblock for, for mining cryptocurrency is energy. It, it is, it is by, by far the number one. Our relationships in the energy market and the ESS market allowed us to uh, lock down uh, a great deal of energy for, for this use, which, which puts us head and shoulders above all the, the crypto miners out there right now. But, uh, but as I said, our, our focus is ESS solutions, it's energy storage, it's energy consumption, energy use, and the ability for our consumers to have absolute control on what they do with their energy, how they use their energy, and the passive generation of income of their energy is a no-brainer in my eyes. It's, it's, it's an absolute perfect move. Yeah, and I noticed that ACDC has been one of the most well-traded stocks on the Canadian small cap markets in the past year. You have consistently been in the top five most active stocks for the CSE. Now, what does that mean for your shareholders? Well, when you when you look at when you look at the structure of the company, you have to understand that the structure of the company is focused on the development of the company. Uh, the structure of the company and the liquidity of the company is a, is a great benefit for shareholders as it allows institutional investors and large investors the opportunity to take part in this company while allowing smaller investors the opportunity to sell their shares with, without any issues. Um, I'm a big believer in, in working a company towards a higher market cap, making good on our promises, delivering on our business plan, and the number of shares out is not a, fire, is not a priority for me. It's, it's, it's connected 100%. Having a high share count allows a company to maintain liquidity 
which allows for a fair trade in the market, which allows for a proper valuation of the company, and also as a reflection on the valuation of assets gained. Having a large share count and the liquidity we have allows us to go out to companies and negotiate better acquisitions for the company, better growth potential for the company, because we can demonstrate over five, six months, the stability of the stock, the, the, the liquidity that's available, and it allows for negotiation on that point. Uh, you know, if, if I had to go to the market every time and, and raise money in order to purchase acquisitions, that would be a detriment to shareholders. The ability to go to the market and say, listen, we love your company, we love where you are and where you're going, and we think you will, you will fit with where we wanna be, and do that on a share transaction is a benefit to shareholders. And clearly it's reflected in the market that it's a benefit to shareholders. Um, just look at our market cap. I don't look at counts. I look at market cap and valuation and how much I've delivered to our shareholders over the last 12 months. Right. We actually did receive a lot of questions about your share structure that you helped to answer. Uh, any more comments on, uh, on you know, what your share structure actually means to, to shareholders? Of course, um, I, I'm a big believer in share, in large share structures. Uh, I think that anybody that's been involved in a company with a small share structure will recognize that the ability to uh, influence the value of that stock is a lot more severe than it is with large share counts. Large share counts protect small shareholders. Small share counts protect large shareholders only. Uh, I believe that, that my job is to develop a company and over time take that company higher. Uh, and I think that that's reflected in our share count. You look, you look at where we've been and where we are now. Uh, realistically, we're a company that's been around for a little over a year. And what we've done for our shareholders is, well, I'm very proud of it. I think that uh, we've delivered consistently. And, uh, you know, the biggest complaints I get are from people with unrealistic expectations on deliverables where, you know, you, you, you look at what we've done and you look at what they expect and it's just irrational. Like we have delivered products, our share valuation is stable. Um, the valuation of the company has only gone up. We continue with acquisitions. It's, it's been nothing but positives in my eyes. And as we move forward, it will be, it will be a continued growth of the company in a realistic manner. You know, we also received a lot of questions uh, asking about your timing on your sales, uh, certifications, and delivery of your products. Can you comment on where you are with these? Uh, of course, of course. Timing, timing on products is, is interesting. I think that everybody needs to be realistic in their expectations on, on product deliveries. Um, I think that, that what, what everybody needs to keep in mind, and and this is, this is a point that's difficult to portray, but in nine months, we took from concept to delivery our smart wall. Uh, that smart wall has been delivered to our first beta client. That small, smart wall is sitting in, in Vancouver. There's a demonstration uh, smart wall in Vancouver right now that anybody can go downtown and they can check it out, plug their phone in, bring a light, plug it in, it, it works, it functions, it's great. For a company to go from, from zero to delivery in the time frame that we went uh, with a successful product requires certification. You can't do that without some level of certification. You can't do that with a, without a great deal of engineering. Um, and you know that being said, I think it needs to be clear that, that with, with all the delays in shipping and everybody's chip shortages and everything else, the fact that we're delivering product is, is a massive win for our company. It's a massive win for our shareholders. And we will continue to strive to do that and to deliver those products. But realistically, the, there will be constraints based on uh, the delivery of materials. And, and frankly, there are, there are constraints to, uh, related to shipping. Now we've mitigated most of those and we've planned with, with our partners on the rest. And we are meeting our requirements. We are taking orders. Things are progressing. But, you know, I go back to the expectations on timing. I think if you've got somebody that's telling you that this company is behind when we've delivered in nine months what we've delivered, they're just, they're, I don't know what their, 
their overriding expectation is, but they certainly are not a realistic statement of the company. And I would, I would question what their underlying motives are. This company is doing its job. Uh, the valuation of our stock, the continued acquisitions from, from great companies are, are nothing, nothing more than demonstrations of us doing our job. Speaking of products, uh, there was a lot of excitement with regards to uh, ACDC's uh, partnership with Daymac. Where is that partnership now, and what what are what, what's the progress update for shareholders? Um, we love Daymac. Uh, the, the partnership with Daymac is is spectacular. Where we are, uh, I have to be careful of what I say on on these things. The partnership with Daymac is great. Uh, things are moving forward. We we are working with them. I would say daily, weekly on product development. We are meeting meeting our our engineering on um, batteries that they will require. You know, I have to mentally go through what's what's been what's been news released and and what hasn't and and where we are with that. But I can assure shareholders that that the relationship with Daymac couldn't be better. Um, we we like where it is. They like where it is, uh, and from an engineering perspective, uh, great things are 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 coming with Daymac. Some of our uh, respondents were actually even more aggressive in their questioning. They're asking, "Will you merge with Daymac in this sometime in the future? Can you comment on that at all?" Uh, the, uh, the partnership with Daymac is wonderful. Uh, you know and. And that's about all I can say. Everything has gone better than expected. And I find that that from a corporate perspective, where we are and where they are, where we're going, where they go, they're going, there are so many synergies that that we are working through together uh, as partners that, that will continue. And lastly, uh, a lot of, in, of our respondents are asking, you know, what's next? What's next after all you've announced, and when can we expect another update from uh, from uh, from you? Well, I think I think that that I think I, I think I should take a step back and 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 make a statement about our business plan and where we were, where we are, and where we're going, uh, so that it it makes a little more sense. Um, we we started out predominantly as a company with us with a very strong blockchain and crypto orientation. Uh, we, took, we took that and we realized that the market was developing smart grid technology that we had a competitive advantage in, which is where the BMS comes in and the ESS solutions come in. That made us an energy storage company. And, and really it made us an energy supplier slash storage slash absolute control company. So if you, if you are... As an example, if you're a wind generation company and you're producing more energy than the grid can hold, you absolutely require an ESS solution so you can store that energy and put that energy into the grid at a more advan advantageous time, generating income higher for your development. That works on a house, that works industrially, it works, it works on a district scale, and it works on a country scale. It doesn't matter who you are if you're producing energy and you have excess energy, you need to put it somewhere. <clears throat> in the background, when you look at that opportunity and you look at the arbitrage, which is the difference in price and the value of that arbitrage, you also have to consider other aspects of where you can use that power. We always knew that cryptocurrency was, was a valuable asset for excess power. And that's why we partnered with the Robby, which is a carbon neutral cryptocurrency, which is where I feel the market's going. Um, so now we have a company that is an ESS company and we're stepping into that crypto space in a big way because we have the power that the crypto miners don't have. We don't just have the power, we have the access to stored power. We have every component of that that they require in order to get what they want. So it's only a natural progression for us to implement cryptocurrency with our systems. And, and that's what shareholders are seeing right now. Uh, you know, if shareholders are asking why we're doing this, well, there you go. It's, it's all connected. And, and if you look at it in a rational and smart manner, you realize that the connection is actually quite, 
quite fluid and and in my opinion it's 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 beautiful it's a beautiful connection on what you can do in a carbon neutral environment to produce passive energy through crypto while not doing it in in a, in a negative way energy wise it's 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 perfect Great. So thank you very much, uh, Bryson. This has been a very informative update. I will be sure to get you in front of our uh, our uh, investors again sometime soon, so you can provide even more updates. All right. Thank you very much, Philip. And, and you know there there are things coming. I can't really talk about them right now, but uh, I have been very busy and will continue to do so. Um, I think that uh, as you look at where we are and where we're going, you can. Some people will will make guesses that are probably close to correct, but. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be a great year. Thanks, Bryson. Have a good one. Thank you. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel to help us get more cutting edge stock coverage to the market.